I'm starting to get a little bit worried that the Raspberry Pi isn't up to this. I have um, GMRI running on a Raspberry Pi 4, which is down under the, the shelf somewhere now. And some of the issues I'm seeing, especially the trains stopping, the trains that stop down, down here, the reason why they're stopping is they are allocating three sections ahead. And when a section that requires a points change um, is allocated, then JMRI instantly changes those points. But my feedback sensors are so slow that it's taken about three seconds after the instruction is sent to change a set of points for the feedback to come back and for that point to be set to changed. And I mean, JMRI has always been sluggish on the Raspberry Pi, but I can sort of put up with that, like the user interface and that kind of thing. I can sort of put up with that. But if performance is starting to affect how the auto trains run, then I'm going to have to look into changing how I use JMRI, I think. So I'm going to run JMRI now. I'm actually going to try and do a comparison. I think I can, because there's a, there is a PC up here, and although I don't have a usable... Let's get down and get the right profile. So this is JMRI loading now. Loading my profile in. It's, it's noticeably started taking longer since it started opening Dispatcher at startup and, and that kind of thing. So um, this might take a while. All of the, the Arduinos are on at the minute, but they're sat to ignore instructions that are sent out to them because it just sends a bunch of zeros. But they're in this this kind of 55 second wait now and, the, and and I've ended up expanding that because that seems to be the amount of time it takes for JMRI to load there. We've got the panel up now and dispatcher but I think it's still got to load panel pro up. And so it's quite a long loading time but usually you know it doesn't really matter because I'm messing about doing other stuff when I come up here and getting stuff ready so I, I'm, you know it, it doesn't usually impact on anything and I can be patient but again if it's affecting performance if there are things I can do so right we're we're loaded up now and the uh, the Arduino should be coming up to life so I'm going to demonstrate what I mean about this uh, delay in feedback so these all of these turnouts have feedback sensors attached to them those micro switches that are on the on the, the clamp that holds the, the motor and under under the board and the general idea is that the the state of these turnouts in JMRI is fed by those feedback sensors so the process is if I click to change a turnout the instruction is sent to change the turnout out to the Arduino the Arduino moves the motor which moves the switch and therefore once the motors moved the message comes back to JMRI through CMRI that the status of the turnout has changed and that's what impacts whether these circles are, are red or grey. So if I go on and change, I'm going to do, kind, kind of try and do a loud click down on the, the, the mouse so that it's audible when the instruction was sent. So let's start with this one. Maybe three seconds between the instruction. Let's try another one. One two, three. I'd say three seconds. I've now moved the RS485 USB dongle to the PC from the Raspberry Pi and I've configured that I've copied the profile from the Pi to Windows on this PC and I've configured the nodes and everything so although it doesn't have a, uh, a DCC controller attached to it. It is now operating CMRI. So I'm going to do a direct comparison of operating all of the CMRI accessories and see if there's any noticeable improvement in performance. So I'm going to run Panel Pro. Select the profile. <laughs> I'd say <laughs> instantly there is um, improvement, certainly in loading times that has um, flown onto the screen compared to how, I, I think, because there, there are delays actually, I'm going to have to sit and wait for half a minute or so now because the, the Arduinos are set up to delay for about, I think, 55 seconds it, it ended up being um, to allow for all of the incorrect turnout um, 
instructions coming from JMRI because it just sends everything as zero, everything as closed when it first, or just a bunch of zeros out on JMRI in fact, when it first starts and that makes all the Arduinos react and set all the points to funny situations and I think I did a video a while ago on changing that behaviour so that because I've got feedback sensors on every turnout, um, the delay allows the two to sync up and, and the, the feedback from the sensors get back into JMRI and JMRI gets the, the points all set properly which probably has happened by now I'm hoping so I'm going to come in and I'm going to try and change some points I'm going to do this the same as I did before I'm going to put the microphone as close down to the keyboard as I can so that um, the click is audible um, to give a, an impression of time so here we go that's instant and the feedback as well I'm looking at the screen and the feedback is is instant as well it's just coming straight updating straight away let's try some of the doublers up at the top I mean hearing them go but they're like go, go one at a time but they're still pretty much instant Oh, missed the button. And I mean, just a, a general look around JMRI if we open up a, say, the sensor table, like I was doing before, it's just instant. Edit a sensor, it's coming straight up. Those couple of tests I did then, then were. Um, just after JMRI started up. So there was no other load, there were no trains running, there was no other load on, on the, the, the Raspberry Pi. But I think I've got an example from the last video that I, that I, I put out um, of what happens under load. So I, I was in the middle, there were two auto trains running, I was in the middle of kind of <laughs> worrying whether they were going to crash into each other or not. And I heard a turnout turn. So on this video, when I start it, there'll be the noise of a turnout and it's kind of a buzz and then a click because there's a relay on it as well. And then I kind of say something like, oh, something's happening. And then the camera pans up and, I, and, and now I look at it again, I can see myself trying to work out what happened because I think this turnout's gone, but it doesn't go. So I'm, I'm looking for something else. But just count the number of seconds between the noise of the turnout actually being thrown and the time it takes for this icon here to reflect the fact that it got thrown. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and let it play through. Right, something's gone. I can't work out. So that's what, seven? seven seconds eight seconds that's just too long and it's caused this train to stop if you played the video on the train that's coming around there and wants to go through this turnout stops because it was that long ago that it asked for the turnout to be turned and as far as jmri is concerned it didn't get thrown even though it actually did because this this the, the sensor didn't update the train stopped and the whole thing's come come to a complete halt so there has to there must be that the way it works that there, there must be an issue with the polling from JMRI either to the either the amount of poles per second it's sending or the amount of time it's taking for the Arduinos to, to respond but seven seconds is too long and it's going to affect transits it's going to affect auto trains so I need to work out what's causing this. Now the CMRI metrics window on the Raspberry Pi on JMRI will give us some information. It tells me, for instance, like this has been running for ages and there have been no errors, there have been no timeouts. So every time the uh, Raspberry Pi um, has sent out a poll asking for updates to input sensors and everything, all these things down here and everything else, it's always re received a reply from every node. So that means the nodes are working properly and they're, they're, they're up to speed. And they have a, an average response time of 70 72 milliseconds which isn't that bad so the first thing I know is that every time GMRI, CMRI do ask for an update from the Arduinos from the nodes they are getting it and they're getting it within a reasonable amount of time. What that metrics window didn't tell us though was how many times per second a poll is being sent out.
how many times per second CMRI is asking all the Arduinos for an update on their current input status. So that's where this Arduino comes in. This is um, sat on the RS-485 network. I did a video about monitoring CMRI with this uh, earlier. I'll try and put a link up to it. Um, but the idea of this, and I've adapted the sketch on it as well now, is it, it sits, it's not an official node, it has no inputs and outputs, and, and it's not, uh, CMRI is not aware of it, but it monitors the RS-485 network and it um, reports on the traffic that it sees. So it's got two serial buses, the serial one is connected to the RS-485, serial zero USB is connected to the PC, and it outputs what it finds on RS-485 into the Arduino serial monitor. So this is the sketch that I kind of adapted from the existing CMRI libraries that monitors the RS-485 and CMRI traffic. Um, it has two significant areas that, that it's monitoring for these purposes, and this is monitoring the, the number of pulls. Um, first one is if it, if it receives no data at all on the, uh, on the RS-485 bus for over a second, it starts reporting on it. And then a bit further down, it, if it is re re receiving pulls, it reports on how many pulls per node are being sent out on the RS-485 uh, network per second. So if I upload that and get the monitor window open, we should start seeing data. Here we go, it's scrolling down. So interestingly, straight away, we can see that each node is receiving between four and five poles every second, which is pretty good, really, because there's a 71 millisecond response rate. We know that. So several times per second, GMRI is asking for updates on sensors, and within 71 milliseconds, it's receiving a response. So that looks pretty healthy. But what if I start using GMRI? So I'm going to go and move a turn out and these numbers are they're suddenly dropping I can see a one and a zero so I don't care when it's all healthy and four and five I'm going to edit this sketch now to just report when maybe when uh, the number of pulls per second drops below two back on the monitor then and um, we've now got no text scrolling through and that's because we've set um, thresholds now so if the number of pulls per second is above two it's not going to report on anything and also if it's receiving data every second it's it's not going to um, report on anything so i'm going to go back to uh jmri i'm going to start using uh, various accessories i'm going to set points i'm going to move things around and immediately i am seeing as soon as even even setting points i'm seeing that the number of poles per second is dropping to between zero and one which is worrying because this could this is less often than a second now and this really could affect points are going to be moving when trains are moving around so we're immediately getting uh, a lot less um uh, uh, fewer poles per second but what if i really tax the uh the cpu on this raspberry pi i'm going to open the sensor table so tools tables Senses and what's going to happen here now? That seems good. Oh, so here for that, oh, for that, we had a three second gap and then a two second gap. So, all that scrolling is a real worry because in that time, no poles were sent out at all to any Arduino. And I think the first gap was for three seconds, the next one was for two seconds. So while I'm using JMRI, while it's, it's, you know, if it's running auto trains, whatever, if I just open the sensor table, I'm going to have, a, I think it was a period of three seconds and then a period of two seconds where it, it's too busy to ask, basically. So, yeah, we got to, in fact, we got to nearly four seconds uh, there. And then there was one poll. Uh, it looks like, and then again we went for two. So there were, there was five. There were five seconds there, just on opening the sensor table, when no poles were sent. So what about the thing that really seems to tax this is editing. Now I don't necessarily do this while trains are running, but let's just see what happens. Oh, closing the sensor table has cost us three and a half seconds and then two seconds so that's another five seconds just closing the sensor table 
another one second there as well. Hmm. I'm going to edit this panel. This is the ultimate test. Here we go. Three seconds, four seconds. So that was that was nearly five seconds on opening the the panel. And then it, it did manage to get the pole out and it looks like it's happy again now. So, oh, we're off again. I haven't really done anything this time, but that's another five seconds. This is five seconds of activity. There could be trains running, there could be auto trains running, where no sensor information is being sent back to Gemini. I'm curious to see now, then, whether when I was running those auto trains, and that last video I made, I kind of alluded to the fact that the performance seems to be inconsistent, and I'm wondering, and, and the inconsistent performance is definitely down to sensors not being read properly, triggers not being hit, or seems to be, anyway, and, and I guess that's what's, what's led me here. But I'm going to have a go, and it might not be particularly successful, but I'm going to have a go at running those two dispatches again. So I'm going to create a train and I'm going to load that 101. See if I can get it started. It doesn't always work. Let's see. Let's turn a few points. So, oh, there we go. We had a second when it set those points of no activity. And it looks, for whatever reason, like this time. Oh, the 101 is going to start. That surprised me. So I'm not going to. I'm going to try not to concentrate on the trains. I'm going to keep watching what happens here. At the minute, it's happy. Well, we just had some. Yeah. So we're getting. We were getting one pole a second. We've just had two seconds where no poles were received at all. There's another two seconds and another two seconds where no poles were received at all. And oh, look at this. still going because it's oh yeah it's just at a point so let's add another train not sure I even hit the menu there okay let's create a new train and let's see if we can get the 101 I'm still seeing two second delays up there sorry the 43 No train detected, okay. I'll just go and sort that out. Let's see if we can get that 43 out as well and see if anything happens up here. So it's made it out, but it started too quick. It didn't ramp and it should have ramped. So obviously there's, I think I'm desktop recording that data, so I'm gonna do my best not to record it and just keep an eye on what's happening on this panel. There's another one and a half seconds. I think. So now it's taking loops a long time to process as well, maybe because of delays in, in CMRI. I've had a train stop down there now and I'm seeing again lots of two second delays and it's, this is having a go. It looks like it's gonna need a nudge, which is annoying. Oh, and I've made it derail as well, so I'm going to have to stop this. But I can definitely see that there are going to be there are some serious issues as I quickly try and find the power button. Even that took ages to respond. I think it's the Raspberry Pi here, and I think it's absolutely not up to the job going back in time a bit when I started this particular layout it, I was actually running it off this um, little combination as a command station this is an Arduino Uno this is a motor shield and uh, there are a few guides on the internet on how you plonk this on top of that plug a few wires in install something called DCC++ on here which is just a downloadable sketch and really quite impressively you have a DCC controller it has a limitation, however, and I did a video on this as well, um, of I think it's 1.5 amps, and that's if you've got the official motor shield, and this is a cheap impersonation, it probably doesn't even have that. So while it's good as a demo, and it's good for a, 
um, for a programming track, for example, it's 1.5 amp maximum output is no good for a layout of my size. So that was what prompted me to switch from this back to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi had been the, the controller. It's a Raspberry Pi 4, by the way. And I should maybe say as well, I haven't looked into any heat management on that Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry 5 by 4, 4 gigabytes, uh, but it doesn't have a, uh, a, a heat uh, um, uh, heat sink on it or a fan. And it may well be that it's throttling its CPU because it's it's getting to a maximum heat. That, that's a real possibility. And maybe if I looked into putting a heat sink and fan on it, the performance would improve. But having seen the difference between the Raspberry Pi and a PC, I'd rather invest the time in getting a PC compatible DCC controller up and running than I would improving the speed of that Raspberry Pi a bit. I think, sadly, Raspberry Pi and, and, and me are finished. So my thoughts immediately went back to this and could I get it um, back up and running and maybe buy an additional DCC booster so I could boost the power up a bit and, and could run it. But when I looked into it, and a few people gave me advice as well. Um, there is um, a group of people who have taken the old DCC++ source code and enhanced it quite a lot and added a lot of new features. It's now, and their, their project is called DCC EX, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, and as well as um, continuing to update the code and adding new features, they've also got some good advice on there about how to increase the power output of an Arduino so that it can uh, control a, a bigger layout. And they recommend different motorboards that are available. And I've actually ended up buying one. I've bought this one. This is a MOSFET based board. I mean, there are some boards that they talk about that can output, considering this outputs one and a half amps and the Raspberry Pi, uh, the, the Sprog that's connected to the Raspberry Pi out, outputs two and a half amps. And is, you know, I've never got to the limit of that. There's one on their website that can output 42 amps. This one can output 15 amps. And we're talking serious power. So the the big caveat that comes with these things is they are too powerful and you have to tame them. But there are instructions on how to tame them to use current sensing and to put fuses between them and, and your layout so that you max. So, so the, anyway, the idea is that with the current sensing and the fuses, this will output a maximum of five amps to my layout. It doesn't really take many more wires than this. I've got um, a couple of fuses and I've got a current sensing board that uh, looks a lot like but is not actually this one um, so I'm going to wire all that up and very tentatively see if I can um, return to a DCC command station that's connected to a PC rather than a Raspberry Pi. Somewhat surprisingly then this little contraption is my new DCC controller this is a 15 amp motor board which has its identifier by letters and numbers which I can't remember so I'll put a link in the description. Uh, this is an Arduino Uno with a sensor shield on top of it uh, just to give me a few more pins to play with and DCCX installed as a command station. This is a bit of track that's connected up to the motor output. Uh, I should mention there are 5 amp fuses um, in between the output and the track as well as that current sensor and this is a bit of track and this is a train I don't care about so amazingly Apart from it stalling a bit because it's rubbish, that train, when I change these, I took the plunge then after that bit of testing and I connected this board to the layout. Full disclosure, before I did that, I did have an issue. I think I'd bought a, a 5 amp, 15 volt power supply from Amazon. And I think it was faulty. It was reading nothing when I first got it. And then I fiddled with it a bit and I was getting 15 volts from it. And then I plugged it into this, uh, into this mort board and it worked for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Then I got the smell of burning. The two fuses that connect the 
board to the track blew. So disconnected everything and then the, the power supply was, was reading 25 volts output so that's not getting plugged back in. So I've gone back to the, I've just got the 2.5 amp uh, power supply that was connected to the Pi for the time being. Obviously I've this thing now has the capacity to f run at 5 amps so if I do start getting power issues on the track I know I can just upgrade to a 5 amp power supply. This is capable of 15 volts, so there, and and I'm I'm no no expert on this. I'm kind of repeating what people who have much more knowledge and experience on this than me have told me. But this is a, a 15 amp board, rated, and it's limited to five amps in two ways. There's these current sensors that sit between the track, so the output that goes to the track and the output that goes to the programming track that come out of here, they go through this current sensor to start with and then into fuses which are down here so 5 amp fuses sat in in both of of these these both of these go to the main track i haven't got the holders yet for the programming track so i don't actually have a programming track in place yet but these two are on the cable cables that come from the um the board one of the outputs goes through this hall sensor before it goes into the fuse so it goes you got the one cable comes straight into the fuse and then out to the track the other one goes through this hall sensor and out to the track the idea then you've got a double um, threshold if the hall sensor reports the loads more than five amps the software the arduino will cut the power to the track um, and if obviously if these things detect more than five amps as I've proven it already has the the fuses go and that protects the layout. The board itself has enough connections just over here uh, for the connections to the Arduino for a for a, a programming track and the main track. The diagram, the the page on on the uh, DCCX command station website. Um, isn't comprehensive about this method. I've gone for what they call the replace method, uh, which gets rid of the original motorboard completely and just uses this board for programming and for main track power. Um, the reason why the programming track, apart from protection, needs a, a, a hall sensor is the acknowledgement messages that come back from the trains during uh, during programming are picked up uh, as current sense by this thing and fed back in and that's how the programmer knows that it's successfully programmed uh, a decoder. The original motor shield, uh, the Arduino one, has current sense built in which is why these aren't needed but this one doesn't so they are. The original picture, although the documentation isn't brilliant, there isn't a diagram for this replace method on the website, but um, if you look closely at the uh, the diagram they have for the other method, I can't quite remember what they call it, the one where the, the um, upgrade maybe, where the, the original motor shield and this one are used together, so the original motor shield becomes the programming track and this one becomes the, the main. Um, the diagram that they use does have the pins for um, for using this for both uh, and and also when you look at the code and the, the little upgrade to the config that you need to do on the Arduino to get it working that tells you which pins you need for the programming track too. Once I got that motor shield in then I decided it might be a good idea to test the layout to MRI using the same parameters as I had before so that's these two auto trains the 101 and the 43 so nothing in the config has changed since I put the motor shield in because I stopped um, trying to fix things on the pie because I kind of suspected that was the issue so this is the original footage and this is the 43 about to at, at the end of its journey um, it was meant to turn in here and kind of go and park itself down this line, but it sort of abandoned itself. And I thought it was because, and this is what I was talking about earlier in the video, this set of points down here, just the, the feedback came too late. And if I play it, can hear me. Uh, the, the cameras are still picking up my voice. But... It's asked for that turnout to be changed, and it's just changed now. And Unfortunately, the 43 has gone off the camera, but kind of know that what happens is it's already abandoned itself. 
stopped yeah. and i think it just pokes its nose up up there and that's that's where it it finishes so if i go back a bit with this it really underlines the problem i had when you compare it to something that's working it wasn't just the feedback sensors that that were having an issue it was all of the sensors because the pi wasn't polling it wasn't asking for information so if i dig it back a lap pause it as soon as we see the 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 43 here now 43 is about here at this point it's just about to straighten up and head up there but it's in another block it's in the whatever this yard bypass block is called and it fit this this block finishes about here but jmri hasn't picked up that it's in this block yet because it's a sensor and because cmri the the pi hasn't got the capacity for whatever reason to keep pulling the sensors it's too busy it's too overloaded so if i play it on bear in mind that this train should already be in this this block and this block should already be red it's almost in the next block before this block actually gets occupied it's practically gone it's, it's practically out of the block and that that's the point when it's been occupied and if i go and get so i did a test with the pc and the new motor shield and so if i try and find the same point it's a slightly different angle i think but let's uh we need to go back it's actually no i think this bit's the right so this is the same point as the, the last one and Let's go back a, a little bit more. So there's the, the 43 coming on its way down. And look, that's already gone. Even before we can see that, the, you know, the train must be here. There it is. But that's already gone. And look at the, the difference. This is the pie. And this is the point the train's at when this block goes occupied. This is the PC. And even before we saw this train, this is on the same lap, the same two trains, the same config, everything's the same except the PCs running it except the Pi. Even before this train came on camera, this block was occupied. So if we play this one through again, we know this, this 43 is on its last lap now. And so it's going to want to book this set of points. Let's play it through and wait for there. So that's the point. If I go back a little bit, that's the set of points I was looking for because on this lap, this train wants to come into this yard here. So it's the, the, the layup set this set of points because it wants to go in. And if I just wind it back a little bit there and go on again, watching this set of points for the, 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 the point in time. There. So the, the 43 has disappeared off the, the screen and it's actually just about in that yard already. But that was the point in its journey when the feedback got back that that set of points had changed. Now back to the Windows version again. It's coming around, it's occupying these blocks. It's halfway along about now, so it's going to occupy this one. Camera changes, which is annoying, but it's now uh, this set of points here. There. Look at that. Look at where that 43 is. It's at the opposite corner of the layout when that set of points gets turned on this one on the old one it's just about here it's just about to come into the yard if i play it it's nozzle up here there it is as its shadow and there it is it's just and that was the point when that that set of points got got turned on this one it's at the absolute opposite end giving it all that time giving the single signal masts all that time to to get ready and 
obviously the net result on the, the, the old one on the pie was that the train just got abandoned at the entrance to the yard and this is again it's the same config nothing's changed it's the same transit it's the same saved files look the, the 43 is slowing down nicely now in good time it's coming in it's obeying all of the speed restrictions that I put on that transit that the other one didn't and it's just crawling calmly and controllably into its yard line coming up to its stop marker stops exactly where it's supposed to stop 